فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Ibn Abu Dawood narrated that Amr ibn Murrah al-Tabi'i once said, they, he and his peers, used to like repeating the entire Qur'an at the beginning of the night or at the beginning of the day. So this is Amr ibn Murrah. Amr ibn Murrah is a Tabi'i. And Amr ibn Murrah, Amr ibn Murrah said, كانوا يحبون, they used to like, أن يختم القرآن من أول الليل. They used to like to finish the Qur'an again, the first of the night, which is again Maghrib. You finish the Quran then. Aw min awwal in nahari, or from the beginning of the day, which is again Fajr. So Fajr, you read the whole Quran. And Maghrib, you read the whole Quran. That's what they used to like to do. So Abu Hamid al-Ghazali's statement is what Abu Am Amr ibn Murrah did. Talhad ibn Musarraf, a prominent Tabi'i, a Tabi'i, someone from among the generation that follows, that follow the generation of the Prophet and his companions, said, whoever completes the recitation of the Qur'an at any time during the day will have the angels pray for him until the evening comes. And whoever completes it at any time during the night will have the angels pray for him until morning comes. Mujahid also narrated something similar to this hadith. Talha ibn Musarrif al-Tabi'i al-Jaleel. He said, Man khatam al Qur'an, anyone who finishes the Qur'an, ayyat sa'atin, whichever time it is, from day, sallat alayhi al malaika, the angels will send salutation on this person. Hatta yumsiya. Hatta yumsiya, until it's evening. Wa ayyat sa'atin, kanat min al layli, and any time within the night, sallat alayhi al malaika, the angels will send salutation on you. حتى يصبح until the morning. نعم. As Dhabi narrated in his Musnad with his chain of narration that Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, if he, the reciter, completes reciting the Quran at the beginning of the night, the angels will continue to pray for him until morning comes. And if he completes it at the end of the night, they will pray for him until the following evening comes. As Dhabi said, this hadith is Hassan by way of Sa'ad. No. It is reported that the Tabi'i Habib ibn Abi Thabit would recite the entire Quran before bowing, i.e., while praying. Ibn Abi Dawood corroborated this, and so too did Imam Ahmed. May Allah have mercy on him. More on this topic will follow in the coming chapter. Allah willing. Then the author, Rahimullah, Imam al Nawi, Rahimullah, he says, في المحافظة على القراءة في الليل ينبغي أن يكون اعتناؤه بقراءة القرآن في الليل أكثر. وفي صلاة الليل أكثر قال الله تعالى من أهل الكتاب أمة قائمة يتلون آيات الله آناء الليل وهم يسجدون يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ويأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وَيُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَأُولَئِكَ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ وَثَبَتَ فِي الصَّحِيحَيْنِ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال نعم الرجل عبد الله لو كان يصلي من الليل وفي الحديث الآخر في الصحيح أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يا عبد الله لا تكن مثل فلان كان يقوم الليل ثم تركه وروى الطبراني وغيره عن سهل بن سعد, سعد رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال شرف المؤمن قيام الليل والأحاديث والآثار في هذا كثيرة وقد جاء عن أبي الأحوص الجشمي قال وقد جاء عن الأحب الح وقد جاء عن أبي الأحوص الجشمي قال إن كان الرجل لا لا يطرق الفسطاط فسطاط طرق طرقا 
إن كان الرجل لا يطرق الفسطاط طرقا أيتيه ليلا فيسمع لأهله دويا كدوي النحل قال فما بال هؤلاء يأمنون ما كان أولئك يخافون وعن إبراهيم النخعي قال كان يقال اقرأ من الليل ولو حلب شات وعن يزيد الرقاشي قال وعن يزيد الرقاشي قال إذا أنا نمت ثم استيقظت ثم نمت فلا نامت عيني قلت وإنما رجحت صلاة الليل وقراءته لكونها أجمع للقلب وأبعد من الشاغلات والملهيات والتصرف في الحاجات وأصون من الرياء وأصون من الرياء وغيره من المحبطات مع ما جاء الشرع به من إيجاد الخيرات في الليل فإن الإسراء برسول الله فإن الإسراء برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان ليلا وحديث ينزل ربكم كل ليلة إلى سماء الدنيا حين يمطي شطر الليل فيقول هل من داع فاستجيب له الحديث وفي الصحيح أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال في الليل ساعة يستجاب فيها الدعاء كل ليلة وروى صاحب بهجة الأسرار وروى صاحب بهجة الأسرار بإسنادي عن سلمان الأمطاء عن سلمان الأنماطي قال رأيت علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه في المنام يقول لولا الذين لهم ورد يقومون وآخرون لهم سرد يصومون لدك لدك لولا الذين لهم ورد يقومون وآخرون لهم سرد يصومون لدكدكت أرضكم من تحتكم سحرا لأنكم قوم سوء لا تطيعون وعلم أن فضيلة القيام بالليل والقراءة فيه تحصل بالقليل والكثير وكلما كثر كان أفضل إلا أن يستوعب الليل فإنه مكروه الدوام عليه وإلا أن يضر بنفسه ومما يدل على حصوله بالقليل حديث عبد الله بن عمرو بن العاص رضي الله تعالى عنه ما قال 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 رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قام بعشر آيات لم يكتم من الغافلين ومن قام بمئة آية كتب من القانتين ومن قام بألف آية كتبت من المقنطين ومن قام بألف آية كتب من المقنطين كتب من المق... What does you say? المقنطرين. المقنطرين. Can you guys look up this hadith, please? In, in Arabic. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قام بعشر آيات لم يكتب من الغافلين ومن قام بمئة آية كتب من القانتين ومن قام بألف آية كتب من المقنطرين رواه أبو داود وغيره وحكى الثعلبي عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه ما قال من صلى بالليل ركعتين فقد باء فقد بات لله ساجدا وقائما سكشن Regarding consistency in reciting the Quran by night. The author now goes into the issue of 
reciting the Quran at night time and having a portion of praying at night time and this is a very powerful point which is a student of knowledge who is seeking knowledge who wants to become a scholar who wants to elevate to that status and he doesn't pray Qiyamul Layl he does not stand up at night time this person needs to evaluate himself and he needs to question himself am I serious about being a student of knowledge am I even uh, serious of embarking on the path of seeking knowledge am I because I've never read the biography of any scholar If a person tries to read the biography of the ulama, any book of the biography of the scholars I mentioned, you will never come across a scholar's biography was mentioned, except what? Except that praying at night was mentioned in his life. This is, was the norms for them, which is the concept of Qiyamul Layl, and then praying at night, then praying at night time. Because praying at night time, brothers, even if it's little, it's an indication of something very powerful. And that is the true essence of what sincerity is. If a person is actually going to stand up at night time and pray, it's a, it's a living example that you're a sincere person. Because no one else would stand up at night. Or there's no one to show off to. You're all, you're all alone. Yeah. The students should strive to recite more of the Qur'an by night and especially during the night's prayers. Allah says, Not all of them are alike. A party of the people of the scripture stand for that which is right. They recite the verses of Allah during the hours of the night, prostrating themselves in prayer. They believe in Allah on the last day. They enjoin Islamic monotheism and adherence to the Prophet وسلم, and forbid al-munkar. Polytheism, disbelief, and disobedience with the Prophet ﷺ. They hasten to do good deeds and they are among the righteous. So this ayah is that, that the author brought is basically talking about from the people of the scripture Allah says. There are a group who are standing, they're reciting the Quran day and they're reading sorry, night, sorry. They're reading and they're in sujood, they're praying. There are many verses in the Quran that support this. Allah says about the righteous people Whenever they go into their beds and they tuck themselves in and they sleep because there's consistent fear in their hearts and there's that hope in, for Jannah they can't really go to full sleep so they get up and they jump out of their beds and they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is a sima. Sima mean a characteristic known by, I'm a known for the people of ilm, student of knowledge. He is not going to make it through being a student of knowledge if he doesn't pray at night. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, and Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, a student of knowledge came to him. And when his student of knowledge came to Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, and Imam Ahmed put water outside for him. He slept at Imam Ahmed's house. And Ahmed got him water. So he told the student, go to sleep, wake up. When you wake up, use this water. So the student went and he, he slept. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, slept. He woke up Imam Ahmed. He prayed his qiyam. And so he... When you pray your qiyam, it's recommended to then lie down before Fajr comes in because of the f fact that you're going to have to fight with yourself again to wake up. And the ajr is connected to this hardship. So when Imam Muhammad woke up, he's now expecting that that water was used so he can bring fresh water. But he had seen that the previous water wasn't used. 
So Imam Muhammad said to the boy, Talibu ilmin laysa lahu wirdu min al-layl. You're a student of knowledge and you haven't got a portion of the night. It's missing from you. This is not something that should be missing from you. Allah says in the Quran, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And they are at night time asking their Lord for forgiveness. The reason why the student of knowledge is because this is the time Allah comes down. يَنْزِلُ رَبُّكَ Your Lord. You, your Lord, comes down this time. And he's saying something that you as a student of knowledge need, which is, هَلْ مِنْ دَاعٍ Is there a caller? Is there somebody who's begging me? And I will give him what he wants. You're now a student of knowledge. And what you, yes, what you wanted is definitely to become a person of knowledge, right? To become an alim. A person who understands the deen of Allah. Here you have your Lord coming down. He hasn't sent angels down. He hasn't delegated this job to anyone else. He took on himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down, you are here snoring. And you're a student of knowledge. You're not asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what? To increase your knowledge and to increase your understanding. And to allow you to understand the secrets of knowledge. You're not. So it's worrying. The path that you're on is a worrying path. Now. It is narrated in the two most authentic books, Al-Bukhari and Muslim, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, What an excellent person Abdullah ibn Umar would be if he would only pray during the night. This is after, this hadith is basically, Hafsa, whose daughter is she? Or what's her brother's name? Abdullah ibn Umar, right? Abdullah ibn Umar told his sister a dream that he had last night. Abdullah ibn Umar, he told his sister Hafsa that he had a dream. When he told her the dream, she went and told the dream to the Prophet And from that, the Prophet realized Abdullah ibn Umar sleeps at night. The Prophet realized that. That Abdullah ibn Umar, he sleeps at night and probably doesn't pray Qiyamul Layl. So the Prophet said a statement. He said, Ni'mar Rajul Abdullah. Abdullah is a noble man. Abdullah ibn Umar is a noble man. But his nobility would have increased Lokani Salim in a layl if he only prayed at night. He would have been more of a noble person if he had a portion of the if he had portion of the night. And when Abdullah ibn Umar was informed of this. And he was told this. He never ever left Qiyamul Layl. Never. Abdullah ibn Umar from that day onwards was an individual who Qiyamul Layl would never miss him. Now. In another authentic hadith narrated by Al Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Abdullah, do not be like so and so in reference to a specific person. He used to spend the night standing in prayer and then seized. Here the Prophet وسلم, he said to Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. The Prophet said to him, La takun mitla fulanin. Don't be like so and so. كان يقوم الليل he used to stand at night ثم ترك when he stopped doing it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he truly loves a consistent action of the slave أحب الأعمال إلى الله أدومها وإن قل the best of actions to Allah is that which is consistent even if it's little you don't have to pray all the Quran at قيام الليل you don't as long as you're praying and you don't Stop. Wallahi, as little as two rak'ah and a witr is enough. And you do that for the rest of your life as a student of knowledge. 
Wallahi, that's normal. Then I have to be 20 rak'ah, 21, and, and, and all of the Qur'an in one rak'ah, nothing. Every single day, read two rak'ah, and what? And one witr. And even if you want, in that, ta that two rak'ah, Read, if you don't know much Quran, read Qisar al-Suwar, the small stories that you know. No problem. No issue, insha'Allah ta'ala. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Whatever you can read, but don't leave it. Some people, the belief that they have is that I'm either going to be 100% or zero. صح? Is that correct or concept? In the eyes of Allah, that doesn't exist. Because he who created you, Allah, didn't, didn't make you 100%. The concept of believing that I have to do 100%, you know where it comes from? It believes that you can fulfill Allah's rights. Which you can't, you can never do that. Whatever you do is always deficient. You can't fully fulfill Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as what He has given you. Just your eyes. The blessings that are connected to are greater than anything you could ever possibly do. But for you to think that I'm going to pray this much, you're in your heart, somehow you believe, or I can't pray, is that you believe that this is the amount that I will fulfill Allah's rights. And that's something to worry about. Now. Dr. Barani and others narrated by way of Sahar ibn Sa'ad, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the believer's pride lies in the night prayer. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, Sharaful Mu'min, the order of the believer and his pride. It's connected to Qiyamul Layl. Pride. What are the youngsters in the street trying to look for? They're looking for honor and respect. I want to get brother, I'm getting respect on the turf. Sah? I'm going to get respect on the turf, on my road, on my neighborhood. They're going to know who I am, brother. I'm leaving behind my name. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ My, my name is going to be raised here. Trust me, these people are going to know. And no, he doesn't do anything. He gets remembered, but not in a good way. So, but this hadith tells us that the honor of the believer is connected to Qiyam Are you looking for honor? Sharaf. Ah. Allah told us where it lies. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَةً Those who have knowledge, Allah raises them. Sah? Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He raises the one who prays Qiyam al-Layl. شَرَفُ الْمُؤْمِنِ بِقِيَامُ الْلَيْلِ Honor, dignity, pride. It's in the Qiyam al-Layl. That's a person who is noble. I saw some mashayikh, wallahi, due to the excessive qiyam that they prayed, I saw some of the mashayikh, due to how much salah they pray, their legs from the side of their foot, the bone here on the right, can you see where I'm touching? The bone there, it came out. Wallahi, because of the qiyam and the weight and the age that they've reached, too much. Wallahi, praying. It was, I remember listening to Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani one time to say to his students, who's fasting today? And they were like, no, we're not fasting, we're not fasting. And Sheikh al-Albani said, I'm old. I'm old and I'm at this age. And I haven't left fasting. You guys are shabs, youngsters, and you're, you're not fasting. So, and this is the thing, once you become addicted to something, even when you're, when you're young, Wallahi, brothers, it becomes a reflex action for you when you grow old. That's why when you're young, teach yourself every good. It will become the norms. It won't stop anymore. You become a, it will become habitual. It will be something you can never leave off anymore. That's your habit. Those people, even if they wanted to, they won't leave the Qiyam. Imagine you started something at the age of 20, 25, and you reached 80. You can't stop that anymore. It become part of your life. It's become part of your life. And as I said before, brothers, dawam, consistency, 
doesn't mean that you don't leave it sometimes. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions that the consistency means that the majority of the times you're doing it. And the times that you do leave it does not negate the consistency of it. As long as the overwhelming majority of the times you're doing this Qiyam, you're standing up and you're praying. Now. There are, many, there are many other hadiths and narrations regarding the virtues of the night's prayer. Abu al-Aqasi al-Jushani once said, there was a time when a man would come home at night. And Listen to this here. Brothers and sisters, sisters, um, tell Jureli to sit down. Tell her to sit down and seek knowledge, man. What's she doing? Um, Listen to this story. This concerns brothers and sisters, wives, and it concerns husbands. Pay attention. Well, look what he says. Abu Ahwas al Jushami. Repeat it again. Abu Ahwas al Jushami once said, There was a time when a man would come home at night and hear from within his house a faint sound like the buzzing of bees. A man would come to his house. He would open his door. Look at the kind of households that they had. And look at the households that today we have. You come into the house, music is playing. Doo, 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 doo. Television is on. Bam! The daughter's over there. She got headphones on, listening to music and whatnot. Look at the household that they used to come out from. And now you realize, wallahi, brothers and sisters, the body, what's the most strongest organ in the body? The heart. And what is the most strongest thing in the community? People's households. It's the heart of the body. The household is the heart of the community. If the house is intact and it's good, the community are intact. If the house is corrupt, then the whole society are bad. Pay attention to this. Ibn Abdul Aziz al Hanafi wrote a book called Qawaid al Ahkam fi Masalih al Anam. Pay attention to this. He talks about the benefits and the harms and he brings things. You know what he mentions? He mentions that the rights that the Muslims have on one another, the rights I ha you have on me, is that my son Ibrahim, I cultivate him and I give him good tarbiyah. Because later, I'm going to let him loose in society. <coughs> When he grows old, right? He's going to rob you. He's going to cause you havoc. He's going to take from your children's money. Yeah. It's rights that you have on me. Are you with me, brothers? This person comes back to the community. He's part of the community. If he's a cancer and he's an illness in the community, then he's going to cause a whole community corruption. True or false? Have you not seen one kid in primary school messes up the whole classroom, finishes the whole classroom? True or false? He causes the biggest, he misguides so much youngsters and kids and he takes with him. Sah? Huh? Adahu. Everybody remembers that one kid, that one jahil kid in the class. Just wouldn't listen, do that raggedy stuff. This the teacher. And somehow, a week or two later, He's got a crowd of kids follow him, doing the same thing that he does. There was a kid called Darren in my class, he was like that. No shkila. And he misguided wufud, aqwam, qahum. Nations followed him. That he was eight. That he, they had fear. That the playground started for. He's by himself, look how many people he took away with. That's the society. And that's how community are. So pay attention to the household and how serious you make sure that your household is. Look at the house that they come to and how much they worked on their household. Hey, Fadda, look what he says. Inna rajula la yutraku al fustata turuqan. Hey, he will knock on his house. Hey. So there was a time when a man would come home at night and hear from within his house a faint sound like the buzzing of bees. Like he heard noise like. This is called Dawi, Kadawi Nahl. But you know, bees, bees, when the noise that they make, he hears that from his house. Do you know what that is? The recitation of the Quran. 
his family are reciting the book of Allah. His kids, his wife, his children. It is Qiyam. One is reading the Quran there. One is praying there. One is this. This is the household that he has. Look, here. From the recitation of the Quran, what then is the matter with people today that they feel secure against that which those who came before them feared? This is what they want. The wife was so scared. She wouldn't. Our wives. Telephone, t speaking to another, gossiping, backbiting, chit chatting, go spending her time talking unnecessary things, WhatsApping. Same with the brothers. Same. Everyone, no one's, no exception, no excluded from this. They were like Allah. They will come into the house, the Quran is being pray, played here, dars is going over there, somebody studying the deen of Allah here. Khair, you just come into your house, all you see is khair that's going on. That's something to be. So look what he says after that. He says, How is it that these people who are on the streets, who are gangsters wannabes, thugs, 50 inch plasma television you bring into your house, really? And then you wonder, why, why are my kids so misguided? You bought your kid at the age of 10, you gave him a mobile phone. You don't, there's no parental control on it. You see, you've not once asked him to give you a check up, what's he doing, what's he doing on the phone? Wallahi, I was 18, I think 19 when I first got a phone. Wallahi, that's how old I was. And even when I got it at 18, 19, I think I got it, I, I was like, mama, you sure? <laughs> I thought it was, you know, my mom sometimes would do something, she's like, take it, take it, huh, Qadr? And I would, it would be severe consequences because of it. So I thought it was one of them ones, where I'll get beaten up for it later. Are you with me? Right now there is just this uh, freedom, things that kids will tell you, ah, yeah, 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 I can do that. Even one of, my, uh, one, of one of my family members, she sent her daughter at the age of eight or nine, she sent her to a trip in France. Brothers, I never ever went on a trip. <laughs> My mom, the trip was somewhere close, you know, when these little places and these little places, it will go, no problem. Even that she'll be like, mm. it depends if that, you know, and this that series, what's it called? Uh, Crime Watch UK, if that came on and something like that was, my mom heard about it and some, you know, Somali aunties told them somebody got killed, the child was from, uh, especially that, yeah, I don't remember, remember if you guys remember, Damilona Taylor, do you guys remember him? Yeah? Who, 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 who remembers Damilona Taylor, what took, that little black kid that got killed in school? Yeah, that was happening in school, my mom was never letting us go know it. The point is that kid, you see parents today, they do, that was a daughter, she sent her daughter to France. And that daughter went, her parents, she signed it. I'm like, I, is, I, is this right what you're doing? I honestly was, you're extreme. You don't understand anything. You're backwards. How much information does your child pick up on the way? How much, in, how much did you sit with them and converse with them and chat with them what they're picking up? In school, boys are there. She's mixing with boys. She's seeing them. She's growing up seeing this is a norms. Her personality is changing. And then once she reaches 18, 19, 20, you're like, why are you doing this for? She's your daughter only from the top now. Inside, somebody else has programmed her. Wallahi billahi. Very dangerous. So why is it that those people who are doing that find safety? They're not worried. And the ones whose wives and kids are all reading Quran and they're benefiting and they're learning the deen, يخافون, they're scared. How is that the case? He asks himself this question. He's asking himself, Al-Ahwash al jushami is asking himself, how is this possible? Uh, brothers, am I just speaking, or does this make sense? Is, is this a reality that you guys see? It's a reality. No, I don't believe anyone can get out of this. We all, all of us, me included, we go home, we've got family members who are, yeah? So uh, is that, who feels like their house is like this? Wa May Allah increase you in good if your house is like this. 
and give us as it, give us as well. But this is worry. That when you go into your house, some people will say to you, Wallahi, by Allah, being on the streets is I my iman increases more than being in my own household. The facade that's going on. The facade that my household in, contains that it consists of. That the times of the trials and tribulations, what will we, what will we command you to do? Run to our households? It's like running away from our houses the way the Fasal and the Khair is in for me. And that is sad. Naam. Imam al Nawi. Imam al Nawi comments. Reciting the Quran is a sign that one fears Allah and the hereafter. And so Abu Akrasi questions chiding me what it, what, it is, what it is that has made those who have forsaken reciting the Quran feel so safe against that which their predecessors feared. Naam. No. Wallahi, it's a good question that one needs to ask himself. And if you have a household, brothers and sisters, Wallahi, you need to work in your, on your household. You need to work on your household that the deen of Allah is being taught. Get rid of, you know, the brothers, you know how to work in your house? Just repel evil from the house. Wait for bringing about good. Just get rid of evil. Just do double mafasid. Wait for general masalih. But the first step that you need to do is get rid of every evil that's in the house with wisdom, with discussion, explanation, dialogue, conversing, bring about better alternatives. Another thing, brothers, that you need to realize is that a lot of people will say to you, I've, sp I've spoken to my family members, I do this, I do that. But the reason why people don't take, care, re take what you say serious is you come and you talk and you leave. And that really doesn't have much weight. Where were you before? Does that make sense? In order to change things and bring about differences, you have to have financial contribution towards the house. Wallahi, money talks. If you pay things in the house, you help financially towards your in-laws, uh, sorry, your in, yeah, in-laws, family members, the people, community you're around, the people you're helping. Once you do do that, when you talk, the chain of command, silsila, tabakat, follow, and here the in line of what you have to say. You bring you bring about better alternatives. Eid comes, you say, look, I've got a car ready for you guys. Let's all go, and let's go. I'm I'm taking you guys out. It's Eid. Let's enjoy ourselves as a family. And you take your family out and you do things with them. They see your hands on. You buy clothes for, the, for your nephews and your nieces and stuff like that. Are you with me? When you do do that, you have now got the right to say, why is this happening? How is this happening? What can, you can talk now. You have a majal of the rights to speak. Or else you're just a bully in their eyes. An author authoritative individual who just wants to exercise his authority. I'm a control freak, that's what they look to see you as. You come, oh let me guess. That's what they'll say to you as soon as they see you. Oh let me guess, everything's haram. And they'll mock you and they'll, they'll make you look bad and everything. So, and the reason is because, if you look at Sira, and you read biography, and I always mention this, you look at Abdul Muttalib, Abu Talib, they run the people because they used to look after the Hujjaj. They were the custodians of the Kaaba. Kufar. But why would people listen to Abu Talib, the Prophet's grandson, a grandfather? Yeah, why? Why did they respect him? Because when the Hujaj came, the people of Hajj, the food that he would make, the Thareed, that the Prophet said it was the best food of the Arabs. You know what Thareed means? That the Prophet said, Aisha radiallahu anha, she is like the Thareed over the other food. How she is towards women. You know what Thareed means? Thareed means three things that are a component of each other. It's bread, and it's meat, and it's soup. When they get put together, and it gets crushed together, and it gets mixed together. The Arabs, they love this. Huh? They loved it. Eating was the best food that anyone could serve you with. And he used to do this for them. The Hujjaj. People of Hajj. 
Abu Talib used to do this for them. And he used to feed them this. What would the people do? When, Abu, Abu, when he spoke Abdul Muttalib, people would listen to him and they would take his command serious. Abu Talib, Nabi Muhammad caused everything he caused, but what was he able to do? He was still able to stop them to an extent, true or false. How? He had influence in the community. He had something in the community. So when you do something for the community and you actually are genuinely doing something, then when you talk, people will take what you say serious. If you're only taken from the community, you're only taken from your family, you're more of a burden on your family, you're living in the house, not paying no rent. Yeah. And you're telling your, your sister and your cousins and your nephews and you're saying to them, oh, wash my clothes and do this for me. And then later you're like, it's haram, fear Allah, stop doing this. You're a burden on the Yeah. Get out of our face. Get, get somewhere. Go move out. They don't take you serious. Does that make sense? So that's why it's important.